Yeah. You say you lock up the coop at night, right? Yes. Is there a problem of getting all 30, 40 chickens in there? When it gets dark, everybody but us knows to go to bed. Can I tell you something, how brain dead we are for our education? God created lighting on the planet for a reason. And there's a reason the sun goes down when it does. Did you know that your body is, is re renewing cells every day? You know when it does it? It does it at night, and the most, the most reproduction of cells at night is the hours before midnight. After midnight, nothing happens. Really? You know when the sun gets, goes down? And remember the old adage, early to bed, early to rise makes a man or woman healthy, wealthy, and wise. Is real. And everything in nature except us, when the sun goes down, goes to bed. And we have lights. We can stay up all night. We think we're smart. <laughs> and we're all sick. And we're not regenerating the cells we need because it all happens in the hours before midnight. And I love where I, I live in California where it was a monoculture, same all year. I love it here. This time of year I don't get to bed till 12 o'clock because it's light till 10. You know, I'm up at 7. But man, in the wintertime when it gets dark at 4.30, I'm in bed at 6. And I generate batteries all winter long, man, for the summer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm just telling you, because yeah. lighting is, is there for a reason. And we yeah. should connect. Yeah. And God didn't make this accidentally. It's genius design and it's for our good. And we think because we're so smart, we can run lights, we can, you know, have a greater life. No, we're not. We're sicker and dying, di you know, dying younger. It's, it's not, not good. What, uh, what mountain is that, that, that peak? The, these are, the, oh, that's the Olympic Mountains. That's a, yeah. yeah. But is, this that, is, is that Mount Olympia? Or? I'm not sure which one it is. But you know, I live in a, a unique place. There's very few places on the planet that have a mountain range right next to the ocean. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's here. This is a super incredible space. And I live in a county. Jefferson County, 10% of the property is privately owned. 90% is national forest or international, or, or um, it's actually international now, or state land. Wow. So it's a really a special place to live. Yeah, nice, nice. And yeah. You, see, you see all those 50,000 acres up there, all those woods? That's all owned by a private family clan here in, 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 uh, in um, Gardner. And they own everything behind my house to the highway, and they sell to nobody. And they just, they just log it every 40 years. And this will never get developed. That house across the street, is the last house's cabin. You bought the five acres next to it, and there will be no more development here forever. Oh. So it's a very, very unique place. I'm very thankful to live here, especially after growing up in Los Angeles. Okay, to recap, to start from ground zero, you mow the grass and you leave it lay. Go on live. Okay, <laughs> and then the paper, and then four inches. So if you do it now, by April, that stuff will be all history. You'll pull the witches back. You'll have the softest, most beautiful ground. Plant your seeds. Stuff, 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 you're going to be blown away how awesome. This is a perfect time because it's coming right into fall. As soon as you put wood chips on the ground, as soon as water goes through it, it creates compost tea, which feeds the plants below it. So the second you put it on, you get results, and they're just compounding over time. Every year, getting better and better and better. It's totally positive, and the results are immediate. It's just, you know, it's slow starting, but it's just progression. It'll go in the right direction. So if you, if you put in, let's say, in September, this, the ground could, you plant then in the, the spring, right? in April, and everything be cool. Totally cool. Pull the witches back. Here, let, let me show you here. See, you see, you just put these witches down. Watch this. You see, you pull them back. Watch this. You see how quickly you're coming down to real soil. See, this is, this is witches, but it's rotted down. So here's, and so you, so you see how damp that is. You, this is August. You see how damp that is. This has been no rain. Now, here's what's so cool. You see that little ridge? So you make a little groove, plant your seeds, cover it. You see that ridge there? When the wind blows, that knocks out the wind and it's warmer down there, your plants come up quicker. As the plants come up, you take your wood chips, just push around your plants and cover it, and then go get on the phone, go visit your friends, go take a vacation because your garden no longer needs you. It totally maintains itself. You put the wood chips after they germinate? After they come up, yeah. you got to get the plants up, otherwise you'll bury them. Yeah, okay. So after that, they put the wood chips back. On the, see but it won't kill the grass. The, wood, the grass is dead if you put it down now. That's already, already, already gone and turned into compost. You won't even see the grass. If you put that cover down now by April, it won't even be, you will never know grass was there. Because my grass is all brown right now. It's fine. It'll still die. But I still have to do the paper. Yeah, because otherwise in spring, if you didn't do it, it's going to say, we want to grow and thanks for all this food. So, Paul, yeah. if we're going to do this from scratch, right now, today, cut the grass, do all the paper and everything, what about planting a winter crop? If you want to plant a winter crop, where I live, September 1st is the last I can plant. And so you'll need to pull that stuff back that you put down and, hope, and access the soil that's there and planting it and you're good.
Okay. Can you put there other you soil in there? You can, but why? <laughs> I'm asking why, why would you put other soil there? Well, because you, you want the paper to kill what's underneath it. Well, if you put other soil there on top of the, the stuff that's living there, the stuff's going to live in that soil and come right through. So you didn't gain anything by putting soil over it. Okay, how long does it take for after the paper's down that the stuff is dead underneath? Depending on water, the more water, the quicker stuff composts. So if you do this in the summertime, water, because that increases the, the breaking down comp process. Water really yeah, accentuates composting. Where's your uh, walk-in? In the back over here. And I have a walk-in cooler, eight by 10 walk-in cooler. And uh, what temperature do you keep it at? I keep it at, at, at like, um, Low 30s because there's a fan blowing, it doesn't doesn't freeze. Uh -huh. And um, man, my, I still I still have honey crisp apples in there that, are, that I, pl I picked last year. They're so hard and crisp. Do you just put them on strips? In boxes. In boxes. Yeah, it's an eight by ten walking, so there's plenty of room. So I stack boxes. Yeah, right. Okay. And that honey crisp is the most amazing apple. You guys are writing things down. Let me get, let me give you five awesome apple varieties <coughs> that you are winners. You see, most a lot of your apples are 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 diseased, not diseased, but they get scab and issues. These are disease-resistant varieties, and they're incredible. The first two, you're going to love the names. Liberty and Freedom. Oh, easy. <laughs> Those are good names. The next one is Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp is amazing, the most amazing keeper that exists, and it keeps for the whole year. It's amazing storage. Awesome. The next one comes from Japan called Akane, A-K-A-N-E. And they're aromatic. You can put an apple in your house when it's ripe and the whole house fills with aroma. It's amazing aromatic. It's an incredible good apple. And the last one is called William's Pride. It's an early apple that's really crisp. Most of your early apples are mealy. This one's really crisp, really a great apple. Those five varieties, man, you'll just love. They're just awesome. What about the teenage one? What's that? Macomb, 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 Macomb is no longer carrying apple trees. Someone told me that this year. I, I would, I, you know, there's there's a really nice there's a nice um, place you can mail order that has good trees. It's kind of small, but they're good quality. Um, it's um, Baker Creek. No, no, it's not. Oh, what is it? It's, it's right here. It's in on Alaska. Um, I can't think of the name of it now. Um, Burnt Ridge, Burnt Ridge Nursery. Burnt. Burnt Ridge Nursery. They're on Alaska, Washington, and they have really a nice, nice selection of fruit trees. Now they'll be small because they're shipping them to you, but that's okay. They'll grow. It's in on Alaska. But on, it's on, it's on Alaska. On Alaska. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, when we go back, all of our tomatoes, everything will be dead. Because of the heat. Yeah, because when we left, we had 106 heat index. The season's over. Okay. So, can we pull those up and replant stuff for the winter in Florida, like greens? greens yeah, I would. Sure. It's okay. in California. See, during the winter time, in California, on a south bank, my mom had zucchini and tomatoes in February because it was south facing. It was protected. And so in, in warmer climates, like you all winter long, you'd be growing kale and lettuce, spinach, cilantro, all these wonderful greens you can't in the summer. So in your climate, you should be eating major awesome food year round. Oh yeah, you guys are just un unbelievable what you can grow there. Do you grow tomatoes and squim? Yeah. I grow tomatoes and hot peppers and figs, apricots and peaches. This year I had the most amazing apricots, just huge. They were awesome. It's really good. What you variety of pears do you plant or like? Um, I have a variety over there. I wish I knew the name. <laughs> it's the most amazing pear. It's huge. It's like awesome. And I've given sign wood to people all over the world. See, but I have no idea the name of it. Oh, okay. If you want to come back here in January, I'll give you a sign wood. You can graft in New Year's and it'll be the best pear you ever had. <laughs> what, you were talking about apple trees. What's the teenager one? Oh, the teenager one is, is um, Sweet 16. That is such an odd, the flavor, man, is off the charts. There's nothing you've ever had in your life that compares. It's just amazing. It's like, it tastes like licorice at one time yeah, and like bubble unique. gum at another time. Very unique. Time. It's just to, it's called Sweet, Sweet 16. And I have one here if you ever want cyan wood, you know, come and call me in the winter, I'll save you some. So good. And I barely started. Only get better. Barely started. It's gone. Everything that I've been telling them all summer long, everything that's coming out of my garden is so watery. Yeah. <laughs> and so good. He got it. And I haven't even had it started. It's, He's it's so good. He and you're so turning it around into hundreds more gardens just yeah. like this. Yeah. And yes. another thing is, he's got it's God. He, he, well, really, he loves us. And like I say, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he raises the standard. This is the standard of God. He's wanting to help us. He, he's, he's knowing everything's coming apart. He says, I want to give you hope. I want to give you help. He's a good dad.
cares about its kids. And the soil that you have on the side of your house was too. half of our hillside. <laughs> they put wood chips down there, and now it's almost like a river of water. I mean, yeah. it's just... We've got fig trees growing there, too. <laughs> yeah. We planted figs down on the back side. All we have a Japanese watched. maple that's going crazy. Yeah. It's just it's all from... You're going awesome. gonna, gonna, gonna like to find You're going to have a hard time stopping things from growing, not making them grow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah we did. We called, the, we called the local tree service, and we got it. They, they, they kept... Calling us. Calling us. Well, yeah, because colonists. you see, they got to unload. <laughs> Most do. places they have to they have to pay yeah. to dump. So they're glad to yeah, they were, have they were, resources to get rid of stuff. You know? Yeah, we were. The first two batches were great. It was just great chips, just like this. But this, then we got holly and we got all kinds of rough stuff. <laughs> well, you know what? I, what I find is that you know, like in an orchard place, where you're not going to have to use it. Put that rough stuff. That's what we did. We actually you know, took it, down around the outside portion of our property where we have all the we have uh, uh, hazelnut trees and everything else out. This we put around all the bottom of those trees and. Out where we got our, the black. Yeah, just you know, God will show you how to use it, use yeah. it all. You know, and you can be, you know, this will work here, this will work there. Just, exactly. yeah, it's all good. Because you know, again, the word everything turns back to dirt. From dust we came, from dust we turn. Such a great design, all recycled. So so beautiful. Yeah. How many acres do you have? It's five point three, oh. and it's just it's, a, it's from, from that that tree line there to this one over here is half the width, and from the road to the house is halfway the half stack in the woods. So it's mm -hmm. a, it's a 330 by 664. You look so amazing. You know, it's my neighbor's house across the street. In the winter time, when I'm in full sun, he is in full shade, because he's north facing. Yeah. I'm south facing. So this is such an amazing space. See all the trees in the back, and it's all up in the front. It's just like the perfect space. Thank you, God. And do you think five acres is? I mean, would you? I'm, of all the places I'm growing, <laughs> of all the places I'm growing food in this place, is less than one acre. Mm -hmm. Less than an acre. You don't need a lot of space to have good ground. It's, it's when you have good ground, it's trying to stop things from there. It's your channel, not make it. So you need a lot of space. And you have enough in that one acre to feed your chickens, your family, oh, and neighbors. every single person people who walks in here. here. People come in here with a take boxes out. You can't even tell them what my garden is doing that. Because there's so much. You know, my, my chickens, I mean, look at the, the, all this food they get, you know. So I'm just, I have to unload this stuff. So, you, know, just, you can't eat it all. Anymore. I just, it's just, I mean, my chickens is pathetic. They eat better than most people. <laughs> when I'm giving them lettuce and stuff. It's like, look at that nice cabbage we're eating over there. It's like, it's just crazy, you know, but it's like, gotta get rid of it. <laughs> it's done. Thank awesome. you. Thank You're welcome. You so much. You're so welcome.